Howdy folks, welcome to episode 28 of Bonfire Man. Here's how Bonfire Man works. I'm locked to specific chunks in the game. I have to interact with everything in my unlocked chunks exactly once. So that means every tree needs to be chopped, every enemy needs to die, every resource needs to be consumed. When I interact with something, it is exhausted. When something is exhausted, that means I'm not allowed to interact with it again. I'm allowed to randomly unlock a new chunk whenever all of the entities in my current chunks have been so exhausted. When I enter a new chunk, I rest at a bonfire, as in Souls games. Resting at a bonfire refreshes or unexhausts all of the content in previous chunks that I've already been to. Now I have to exhaust all entities in both the old and new chunks to continue to progress. My objective is to unlock every chunk in RuneScape. According to my estimates, I think that's going to take about 10,000 hours to complete. If you're interested in all the specifics, minutia, minor rules, exceptions, that kind of a thing, there's a Google Doc in the description that lists all of that. Let's go ahead and get to the playthrough. All right, so our new chunk isn't super exciting, but there is quite a bit to do there. This is the Edgeville Monastery. I'm going to pop over there and light the bonfire. I'm also going to bring the wise old man task with me. Okay, so this is unfortunately one of those chunks where I already have the music unlocked because of weird pathing around the trees on the border. I stumbled into it a long time ago. But let's go ahead and cross the fog wall here. Excellent. And light the bonfire. Uh, the dwarves won't be happy if you light a fire here. Oh, shit, can I not actually get into this chunk? I thought I could cross this. Uh-oh. Not only, oh, I'm, I'm glad the bonfire didn't let me light it. Uh, I don't know if I can get in there. If I can get in there, this is going to be like Port Serum. I'm going to have to roll again. Because even though I can get into Oziak's shop, I, I can't do anything with him. So this is just a sliver of a chunk. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm allowed to cross this without going into this chunk that I don't have unlocked. Well, uh, that makes this this episode potentially more interesting. To fix this, I'm gonna have to do a, there's a lot of weight maintenance I have to do to fix this, unfortunately. I am gonna go ahead and undo the fog wall here. There it goes. Let's pretend like that didn't happen. Yeah, I think situations like this, it, it obviously we've talked a little bit about this already, that there are some chunks where I can get into part of it. So like I was gonna go ahead and let myself roll Falador before I had a way to get in there because there is at least some number of trees here and there's a way to get in from the top part. And I let myself roll Drainer Manor early because there's lots of trees on the outside of it. But in cases like this one in Port Serum where there's there's nothing in the slice you can get to, it represents, I don't know, less than 5% of the total chunk area. I, I think we got to reroll. This basically fixes the, uh, the Temporas problem. Hey, I'm back in the chunk picker here. Um, I've removed the monastery for now. We're going to have to get to that from the south or I guess potentially from the wilderness in the future. Uh, I've also removed the adjacent chunks, and this time Temporas Island is available to roll. So I guess that basically fixes the problem. This is going to show in our chunk roll history forever. It's going to show the Edgeville Monastery uh, just like it does for Port Serum. So you can see the evidence of that error. I guess I when I roll a chunk like this, I should quickly go on my main account and scope it out before I show up with a tinderbox to light the bonfire. But no changes from the last time we discussed chunk rolling. Let's pick a chunk here. Hope for a good one. Uh, I think that's a bad one. Yeah, that's significantly worse. I would have rather had the monastery if I could get into it. Five billy goats, five goats. Oh, I guess a new fishing spot is maybe interesting. Wow. Okay, well, this isn't, we're not able to re-roll anything here because we've never done goats before and we've never done a harpoon spot before. So we do have to spend another 24 plus hours. But hey, at least the roll's out of the way. Okay, so while that's a much more boring chunk than the monastery, this harpoon spot and cage spot's actually gonna be pretty good since we're gonna be able to immediately complete the chunk. Maybe, more on that in a second. Since we're gonna be able to immediately complete the chunk, um, then I'll, in future cycles, I'm going to be able to fish the harpoon and cage spots to depletion, which is potentially a lot of fishing XP and a good amount of food for the account. So it's boring, but it's potentially good. I'm going to head over there. So I don't actually have a high enough level to use the lobster cage. I might just barely be able to squeeze it out if I tap my other fishing spots that are available to me this cycle, namely the one south of Barbarian Village. 
Also, I have a single fish pie from Romilly's Pie Shop in the Cook's Guild that I could technically use to get a boost of three levels. So if I absolutely have to, I can boost for it, but I'm gonna try really hard to hold on to that pie if I can. I'm gonna head over and light the bonfire, uh, do the things I can do, and then pop probably right back here to try to get my fishing level up. Okay, I'm here at the chunk boundary again. Let's try this fog wall thing again. There it is, okay. Hooray, uh, new chunk. Let me light the bonfire. I probably need to have some water skins here. I'm currently dying of thirst. You know, let me just pop right back in and grab some water skins real fast. All right, so I lit the bonfire. I got my stuff back. Let me rest at it before it uh, despawns here. Resting at the bonfire. Everything respawned. Fantastic. Okay. Let's go fish. All right, it's time to talk about our episode objectives. If you've seen this in the previous episodes and you feel like you get it, go ahead and skip to the next time code. So we are up to almost 8% of the game unlocked, and let's first look at 100% completed chunks. These chunks in green are the ones where we've exhausted everything there is to exhaust in the chunk, and this confers a special benefit. Some skilling nodes in these chunks can be depleted, like trees, fishing nodes, this is finally the episode where I'm going to introduce the change to thieving. I've been talking about this for a while now where there's a math problem with thieving. There's not enough thieving XP in the game for thieving to be reasonably trained in bonfire man mode without some kind of adjustment. And the adjustment is that when you 100% complete a chunk, any thieving NPCs in that chunk may be pickpocketed 28 times each. So you'll finally see me benefit from that this episode. Also the newest chunk that we've unlocked, the South Unka Ruins, could be 100% completable this episode, depending on how much fishing XP we get. If we're able to fish for both one lobster and one tuna, we'll have 100% completed the chunk, which means that in future cycles, we'll be able to deplete the lobster and tuna nodes, which will be a pretty big bump to fishing XP per cycle. This is a good case to point out the difference between this rule set and something like Extreme One Chunk Iron Man. All I care about is being able to exhaust all of the nodes in the chunk, not do every possible skilling activity in the chunk. So you'll notice that we're calling this 100% complete once I can fish for tuna and lobsters, but we don't care about being able to fish for swordfish. It'll be a nice buff once we get to it, but we don't have to do it to consider the chunk complete because the, the node is already exhausted once we're able to fish for tuna. That's it for the 100% completed chunks. Let's look at the blocked chunks. So the first group are chunks that are blocked by quests. This is the same as it has been for several episodes. Of special note here, we've got East Ferox Enclave. I need to be able to do Last Man Standing to complete this chunk, and that's going to require 30 quest points, which we're really close to. Literally just needed one more quest for some time. And then what lies below, I'll probably end up recategorizing as an item blocked chunk, because we have everything we need to do what lies below, but we need a Chaos Talisman, which either is going to require access to the Abyss or really good luck on the rare drop table in caves. After that, we have skill blocked chunks. This is the same as it has been for a while. 82 construction for master stashes, uh, 55 mining for mithril rocks, 70 mining for adamantite rocks, and 40 thieving for guards. I should note that the 40 thieving is gonna happen a lot faster now because I'm implementing that thieving rule change finally. I should have had that rule in place back in episode one, but I've been doing this whole figure out the rules as you go thing that I've talked about several times at this point. I feel like if anyone else wants to start a fresh Bonfire Man account, they're going to have a lot more information than I did at the start of this playthrough. After skill block chunks, no item block chunks, but like I just mentioned, I'm probably going to move the What Lies Below uh, East Varrock Vine chunk to item blocked next episode. And then finally, we've got chunk blocked chunks. We can't complete the Soul Wars lobby because we can't get to the trees on the west or east sides. So that's it for the overview. Let's get back to the episode. I don't know how many people have ever used these fishing spots. They're actually not too bad in terms of distance to a bank, but you got to use a Shante Pass every single time. I'm going to get one harpoon fish from each of these nodes here. And then hopefully we'll be able to get our fishing level high enough to do the rest of them. All right, that's the last of that. Three harpoons. And I got to go kill 10 goats. Be our first ever billy goat. I guess it's nice to get this significantly before getting access to herb lore because we should be able to build up a whole bunch of goat horns for herb lore training later. Okay, this is the last goat. Probably will kill these every cycle just because it's a unique drop. And it is kind of neat to be on the edge of the map, actually. Um, I guess it's not one of the more interesting edges, but there is nothing south of here. That's it. Yeah, so I'm going to go bank this stuff. And actually, I'm just going to teleport to Barbarian Village. I'm going to try to get my fishing up to 40 so that I can actually mark the chunk complete and catch a few uh, lobsters. And then on future cycles, I can tap out all six effectively of those nodes. 
There's fishing 39. I don't know if I'm going to make it to 40, but golly, am I going to try. Okay, so I've done the math on this, and it's pretty easy for me to completely fill my inventory at these nodes if I hit them right when they move when I'm fly fishing. Uh, they're guaranteed to last just long enough, and my catch chance is just high enough that I should almost always be able to fill my inventory before it depletes. Not the case for pike, though. The pike catch chance is about half as much, and it almost always moves before I fill my inventory. I really need the XP here, so I'm just going to stand here and wait for one of the nodes to move to make sure I hit it as soon as it becomes available. First group of pike did not go very well. I did get it right when it moved, but only got nine pikes. Cutting it close. I mean, I might be able to hit it with some of the other fishing nodes that I do have access to but can't deplete. I'm going to deposit these just in case and head back for some more pikes here. Okay, didn't get it. Uh, 194 fishing XP to go. Really don't want to use that fish pie. I have other fishing nodes. I will use them. There might actually be, it might be guaranteed that there's enough XP in those fishing nodes to, to hit the level, but I, I'm not sure. I guess I'll hit the shrimp anchovy nodes in Lumbridge Swamp, as well as the ones in Al Karid. And then I guess, well, if I'm going to go to Lumbridge Swamp anyway, I may as well hit the ones in the uh, Lumbridge Swamp Cave too, because those are better XP anyway. God, I keep catching sardines. This is my last. I need to get a herring to hit the level. I'll be okay, though. I have to go across to Alcarid. Like, just a question of do I need to leave? Oh, we got it. Fishing 40. All right. Can now catch lobsters. Let me go back to Unka, finish that up. We'll mark that chunk complete. This is the second time I've gotten a chunk unlock right around a lucky level up. I mean, I guess it's a confirmation bias thing, right? If I got a chunk unlock and it wasn't near a lucky level up, there'd be nothing to comment on. The last time it happened was when we got Giant's Foundry, when I was just barely close enough to hit 15 smithing. But it's good. I'll take it. Um, I'm not going to be able to fish those nodes of depletion this cycle, but starting next cycle, we will be able to. And uh, that's potentially a buttload more fishing XP and a buttload more food. Okay, fishing for my first ever lobsters. I can get three. Okay, and there's my three lobsters. Mark this chunk complete. Victory achieved. Uh, I, it's a boring chunk, but it means that when I roll future chunks that have goats or lobster slash swordfish spawns in them, that they're, I might be able to clear them immediately. So it might save time in the long run. I'm going to update this to a triple star chunk and uh, go do other stuff. I think I'm actually going to start with agility training, and I need to start keeping that clean irrit leaf in my inventory for more agility potions. Okay, I'm here at the Draenor course. Uh, I can run it until I get a Mark of Grace. Again, hoping that that Mark of Grace spawns pretty late so I can get as much XP as possible. If I can get 20 without having to use my last dose of Agility Potion, that would be really nice. I do have it on me for when I head back to El Karid. Oh man, bummer. I, this is really interesting, actually. I, I was under the impression that Mark of Grace spawn rates were based on lap count. That there was like a certain number of laps that had to pass between each spawn. This, this is this is just my second lap today. Last time I think it was three laps, and the time before that I think it was two laps. So I wonder if there's actually like a time cooldown, since nobody does agility like this, right? Nobody runs a couple laps and then comes back a week later. Yeah, so we, I think I'm going to have to use this potion to boost into it. Yeah, I will, because I can't I can't make 20 happen. Monkey bars will get me another 40. Yep, yeah, that's too bad. I'll hold on to this uh, irrit leaf. I think I would have need to have gotten two more laps out of the rooftop course before the Mark of Grace spawned, but wondering if it's worth saving the potion dose until we get the Verok course, but that's a I think that's going to be a really long time. Uh, even once I'm able to routinely do the Alkarid course because I can't do Shadow of the Storm, I can't actually complete the chunk, which means I can't do it until I get a Mark of Grace. I can only just do one lap per cycle. I think the answer to the question, should I skip the course this cycle is no. Um, I only have the one ear at leaf, but it's pretty likely that sometime between now and Agility 30 that I'll be able to get another Dr. Jekyll random. So I'm just going to do it, and I'm going to try really hard to make sure I have this ear on me most of the time going forward. I really need the extra Agility XP whenever I can get it. Oh boy, I fell. I don't have enough run energy. Uh, I'm going to grab my Lumbridge ring really quick. I should have done that to begin with. It'll work so long as I have the plus one boost, so... It should decay to a plus two and then a plus one. Okay, I made it, fortunately, and I think I am gonna hit 20 agility here, so I should be good to do this from now on. Oh, I guess not. I thought I got a bigger end of lap bonus. I'll, I'll get it from the monkey bars though. I've been working on depleting all of my depletable oak trees. 
Oh, that was fast. That's it, though. Good amount of uh, XP from that. I'll tell you how many logs I got here in a second. Yeah, so it looks like 375 oak logs this time, which is less than the average. Average for oaks, based on their deplete chance, should be about 448. But I went over the average last time, so it evens out. Another acorn, which reminds me I should probably get those planted. I'm going to work on that right now. If I'm going to be doing planting, I may as well plant these uh, tomatoes, since they're protected. One more oak sapling to plant. I think while I'm up by Verak, I'll swing over to the Edgeville dungeon and get my Slayer task from Vinaka. I cannot get a Slayer task from Spria uh, this cycle or the next three cycles after this to make up for my adjusting the Slayer rules. Okay, here's our one Slayer task for this cycle. Hopefully it's not blocked. It could very easily be blocked at Vinaka. Hobgoblins, well... Okay, that's not blocked, and uh, because of the new rule that I can do one task, and that during the task, the Slayer Master rings the bell and respawns the enemies, I can do that now. I'm back heading to do this Slayer task, so a reminder on the rules, since these are relatively new, I can kill Hobgoblins repeatedly, because that's my Slayer task. However, I need to kill all of the Hobgoblins available to me before the Slayer Master will ring the bell, quote-unquote respawning them. So I can't just only fight the high-level hobgoblins. I still have to fight a mix of the low-level hobgoblins as well. So I'll come back to report after killing the first five. We'll do the little bell sound effect, and then I'll, I'll wrap up the rest of the task here. Also, I previously mentioned wanting to try to like get the Slayer task at the end of the episode, but I kind of like the idea of not knowing what it's going to be until the next episode. So you have that, that excitement. Slayer 33. I have to deal with, I still get aggroed by the level 42 goblins, so in order to do this bell ringing thing, I'm going to have to run out and back in a couple times here. All right, I've killed five hobgoblins, so the Slayer Master shows up and rings the bell spectrally, and they all respawn, including that one, which was off screen at the time. Now imagine that that happens for every five hobgoblins. I'm going to kill the rest of these 59 here. Here's Slayer level 34, one more to wall beasts. We will not get it this time. Oh! Just hit skill total 1,000. As an Iron Man with skill total 1,000, you now make your iron status permanent. Yes, I would like to do that. It's not going to be a problem, but I will probably go do that. All right, task complete, and that's all the Slayer I'm allowed to do this cycle since I can't also use Spria for another three cycles. Pretty good, though. 2636 Slayer XP. I'm really happy with this rule change. That's still not a lot of XP. <laughs> that's still, you know... Not even on the same order of magnitude as the XP I'm getting from woodcutting. Uh, but it's exciting, and it increases the chances for loot, and I think it's quite a bit more reasonable. So I only wish that I had come up with that sooner. But like I keep saying, nobody's done an account like this before. Like, it's one thing to do a region-locked account and say, I can't leave the region. <laughs> There's not a lot of, like, complexity to the rule set around that. Here, though, I, I appreciate your patience with me as I figure it out in real time. Not really following a particular structure at the moment. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do Soul Wars really quick. I guess I, there's questions I want to know the answer to early in the run. Am I going to get an agility level? Uh, what is my Slayer task? What am I gonna get from Spoils of War? Because they might adjust my priorities further down the line. I still have a lot of woodcutting and stuff to do, but we'll knock these out real quick. First round, I got. 29 zeal, which isn't super great. Hoping to get slightly more than 60 this cycle so I can get three spoils of war, but we'll see. Our team got destroyed that time. All right, second game was 24, so I get at least one more game. I might end up going quite a bit over 60. But also, I've done so badly that I've gotten single-digit zeal, so maybe not. We'll see. I need to get 11 zeal to be able to open three spoils boxes, and... I'm done if I get seven zeal. So if I get any, if I get seven, eight, nine, or ten zeal, that would suck really bad. Holy moly, thirty-seven! <laughs> Actually, if that had been uh, four more, no, no, I shouldn't complain. Uh, way ahead on zeal this cycle, just because of the jank. Did a lot better that round. I can buy three spoils now, and I should be get be able to get three next cycle too. I think I'm gonna buy those and open them up. Okay, moment of truth. Let's open these. I'm hoping for some coal. Rune plate legs. That's not coal, but that's a really big upgrade. Awesome. Uh, I can't wear the plate body if we get it, obviously. And unfortunately, it was it had adamant plate legs before, but that's still super sick. Big deal. All right. And more pure essence. 
All right, second box. Come on, Cole. 263 nature runes, though. It's more money. All right, one more chance. Give me some coal. Uh, Addy arrows, which I don't think are worth elking, but I probably will end up actually using them, so. Okay. I'm kind of sad about these pure essence drops because they're basically useless now. Like it, I've learned from this that if I ever do a different kind of Iron Man or I do leagues or something and I really need pure essence, this is the way to do it because before Soul Wars came out, I don't think you solved the pure essence problem as an iron until you got really far, <laughs> like like Zolra or something. Looking pretty spiffy in full melee now, though I might wear this just for style points. Very excited about the Rude and Plate Legs upgrade. I'm actually not sure how significant that is, though. Is it plus 18 all defenses other than magic? I think that's a pretty big deal. Well, cool. That's done. Um... I guess while I'm here, I'll clear this chunk because there's a lot to do here. Oh, I can use Adam and Arrows with a Maple Shortbow. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely use that. Like if I get Briar Fighter or Obor, I'll use Adam and Arrows for that. I think that makes sense. Hey, you just got a Mossy Key. Good timing on that with those Adam and Arrows. Um, I will try to do a Briar Fighter kill probably after these guys are dead. Okay, I think I'm here all set to attempt this. Uh, hopefully it goes well with ranged. Okay, rune square shield. That is an upgrade. I'm having to finish off the remaining enemies here. I guess I'll just go pick it up really quick just in case they worried about it despawning. I think I've got plenty of time since this is an instance, but I don't want to risk it. Don't ask why I brought a strength potion. That went way better than previous attempts, though. It was a lot easier to flick when I only had to use protect from magic. Big upgrade. Rune square shield over a mithril square shield. That's, that's pretty sick. I'm pretty happy about that. That was wildly more successful than my last attempt with melee. Nice, lots of upgrades in the last couple cycles. We got the rune med helm, the rune plate legs, the rune square shield. I think our defense has just gone up really significantly. Let me see if I can figure out the exact total defense difference. Looks like it's a total of plus 42 defense across the board. The shield is the biggest one actually, which makes sense since it was mithril to rune. I'm wondering if that's gonna make some content more tolerable now. <laughs> Content that was previously really annoying and I needed to melee prayer flick. Like, I'm wondering if I can do catablepins now without having to bring protect for melee. Well, presently my strategy has been uh, do things that are potentially really impactful for the account first before doing the rest of the cycle. And the next thing I can think of is sour hogs. So I'm going to go fight them really quick. Again, the objective there is the adamant scimitar, which is a slight upgrade over the adamant sword. Previously also the Addy kite shield, but I think that's worse than the rune square shield. Well, I got three cooking apples. Um, not great. Yeah, nature runes. No adamant scimitar this cycle. Oh, well. All right, well, there's not too much else I can do that's mega impactful, so I'm just going to get back on woodcutting. All right, about to hit 71 woodcutting. Nice. Can I use a crystal axe? Okay. It's her old friend, the Mime Show. All right, chicken health in this oak really quick. Farming 28. Wild blood hops, okay. Probably can start doing hops again. Over here in Sylvaria, about to get an extremely important level that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. 69 strength. First of all, nice. Second of all, now I have a max hit, even if I switch to attack and defense, so I can finally catch those up. I've been wanting to do that forever, so very, very good. I'm at least going to take attack to strength minus 7, so to 62, and at least going to take defense to strength minus 14, but I might take attack even further because I, I really I hate my accuracy problem right now. So while I'm doing my woodcutting here, I need to do a little bit of a thought experiment. I mentioned that I'm worried about thieving that this account might not be able to do thieving, really. When I added the 100% chunk completion rule lets you deplete things, I didn't really think about thieving at the time, but I probably should have allowed for you can, you know, get a full inventory's worth of coin pouches or whatever from that entity, or I guess 28 steals in the case of something like a master farmer where it's not filling up with coin pouches, but I didn't at the time. But I think what I'm going to have to do, I, I, I'm going to have to look at the math like I did with Slayer, because like, once we were hit by that cave crawler task, it became clear like this could block us for 700 hours and then we could immediately get another task that also blocks us for 700 hours, right? 
So by do the math, what I mean is I want to look and see main objective is the quest cape. So that's, I think, 60 thieving. I don't think there's any quest requirements above 60, question mark. Yeah, 60 is the highest uh, for Dragon Slayer 2. So the question is, if I total up all of the possible XP from every possible source from 1 to 60 thieving, um, how much XP is that per cycle, even if I had every chunk in the game unlocked? And that, I guess that will inform me as to whether I need to rethink my current approach to thieving. I'm going to start working on that in a spreadsheet while I do wood cutting here. I've been doing my allotments here. I did um, tomatoes already, doing onions now, and then potatoes. I might just stick to those for now since I can't really afford to protect or baby or anything else. We'll see. I want to get as much value as I possibly can out of my herb seeds and higher level allotment seeds. I knew I was forgetting something. I got to throw my weeds in there too. do that. All right, so I'm going to share the numbers in a second, but the, the numbers on thieving are, are not, they're not good. They're really not good. The short version is that if I had 100% of chunks unlocked and the entire game world available to me, and I kept my rule about only being able to interact with thieving entities once, if I were magically level 40 thieving, which means I also had access to the 86 guards in the game, which is by far the largest count out of anything on the thieving list other than men, which is 88. If I were level 40 and I could get to every thieving node in the entire game, there's less than 13,000 XP, just slightly less than 13,000 XP across the entire game world, but less than 13,000. Yeah, I'm getting like over 10,000 XP for all kinds of skills with just, you know, this small fragment, like 10% of the game chunks unlocked. It, it gets worse as you get higher level. I think I'm gonna have to, to change the way I do thieving. Um, I wish I had thought of to do this sooner. I probably should have made this call as soon as I made my declaration about 100% complete chunks. I guess on the, the plus side, I can't like go back in time and get the thieving XP back that I've left behind in prior cycles. So you know, that's kind of my punishment for not coming up with the rules sooner. Okay, I finally finished all of the woodcutting tasks in the game world. We're about 10, almost 11 hours into the cycle. I can finally get on to PDM. I am going to go ahead and apply this new rule for thieving now. Should have done it sooner, but that's okay. I missed out on the XP for not doing it sooner. The rule is that the rules about depletion for 100% completed chunks also apply to thieving nodes in this way. A thieving NPC that produces coin pouches can be pickpocketed until you get the maximum number of coin pouches, 28. Uh, NPCs that don't produce coin pouches can be pickpocketed 28 times, and stalls can be interacted with 28 times. I probably will make an exception for pyramid plunder. I won't, like, you just do a run of pyramid plunder and that's it. You can hit all the urns if you want to, but you can't go in there and do it multiple times because I don't think that's, uh, it's already presented as an activity where you're meant to hit everything one time. But none of this content, uh, stalls, master farmers, Thieving assumes that you're going to be sitting there clicking it, spam clicking it. That's how stunning works. That's how health works and so on. So that's applied effective for today, but I have no idea which nodes it actually affects. So I have to look through my my list here and figure out which completed chunks have uh, thieving NPCs in them. I don't think it's actually terribly many right now. Yeah, it doesn't affect very many chunks, actually just four. So North Draenor has one man and one woman. Lumbridge Mill has four farmers, Lumberyard has two men and two women, and Groats Farm has three farmers. So seven farmers and six men slash women um, times 28 for each one. So I guess I'll start working on that because if it get a significant amount of thieving XP from that, it might actually change my decisions for the rest of the cycle. All right, here I'm at the first depletable thieving NPC for the account. Um, I don't think it's actually going to end up generating that much XP, but let's see. We're going to pickpocket 28 times. Okay, that's our first stack of 28 coin pouches, 224 thieving XP. So that's a little bit less than chopping nine regular trees. And think about how many regular trees I have. <laughs> it's over a thousand across my current chunk. So yeah, I think that this is fine. I just should have done it sooner, but you know, Say lovey, I didn't do the math until this cycle. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing for the woman in North Drainer and we'll work through the other pickpocketable NPCs. I guess reviewing other skills, we already have solutions for most of them, right? Fishing is solved by depletion, mining is solved by uh, motherload mine and stardust depletion. 
Um, farming is fine because of our rule about being able to use each patch differently. Runecraft is probably fine, although I could see Runecraft being pro more problematic down the line, but right now I think it's it's okay. Construction's fine. Herblord's gonna be fine. Any processing skills should be fine. So really the only other skill that I'm a little bit worried about uh, long-term is probably Hunter. Right now I just say that I can interact with each Hunter node once, and I, I think that's gonna be an okay amount of XP, but I'm actually not sure, and I think we're gonna have to revisit it once we actually unlock any kind of Hunter training method, because we have, we have none right now. Okay, depleting my first farmer with pickpocketing here. Okay, that's our first farmer. Uh, you can occasionally get seeds from regular farmers. It's pretty rare, but it's 28 pickpockets, not 28 coin pouches. Uh, up to 854 thieving XP, which is a little bit more respectable. All right, here's the last farmer in the Lumbridge Mill chunk. So we're up to 2,072. Uh, I still have a Groats farm and the lumber yard left, so I'm going to knock those out. I, I'm probably going to get, certainly going to get a thieving level out of this, but it's not going to get me to 38. There's thieving 37. All right, get a Quizmaster random. I have gotten, I think it was one of my league accounts, I got a dragon shield left half from this. All right, what do we get from the mystery box? Another mithril scimitar, a little bit late. Actually, this is good though, because I need to have one of these for a clue step, and I accidentally used one earlier in uh, Giant's Foundry, so that replaces that, so that's good. I don't have to craft one. Okay, this is the last pickpocket for the last farmer in Groat's Farm, 196 total pickpockets. Still 3,290 thieving XP. I have one more chunk to exhaust, and that's the lumber yard. Okay, here's our final pickpocket from the new depletable pickpocket option. Uh, we're at 4,000... I opened one of these pouches early. 4,186 thieving XP from that. I'm probably going to get about another 900 to 1,000 from the, the normal thieving activities I can do per cycle. So it's basically brought the skill in line with mining and fishing. That makes sense. Okay, catablepins are way better with all this rune equipment. I've been uh, accidentally leveled strength for a whole bunch because I wasn't paying attention. So now I'm on attack. I guess it'll pay off later, but I was so excited to switch to attack. And then I switched to attack and I think it was on my um, my axe. And I just recently got the adamant sword back. What do you know? It's a mime show. I've gotten two maze randoms ever on this account. Okay, here comes prayer 48. Nothing. Uh... I think I get redemption at 49. Okay. Let's hit attack 57. Let's cross these monkey bars for Earth Warriors. It should ding 20 agility here. There it is. 20 agility. It's got a genie. That's quite nice. Actually going to save this genie lamp because now that agility is level 20, I can go take that lamp from the museum. It only works on skills above level 20. I think that gets me to like level 21 and then I can use the lamp to squeeze out a little bit more XP from it. Okay, picking up this XP lamp from Historian Minus. Awesome. All right, put that on agility, of course. Amazing, 1000 XP, agility level 21. Can use the Grand Exchange agility shortcut. Well, that's actually potentially convenient. And now I'll use this lamp we just got also on agility. And that's 210, which is enough to hit 22. Everything's looking up Millhouse over here. That's great. All right, so I was able to get my museum kudos up to 43. Unfortunately, you need 50 kudos to do the Varrock Easy Diary, and I'm going to need to be able to do the dig site for that, I think. There aren't enough uh, quests for me to do to get high enough. Not a lot of super exciting agility rewards on the horizon, although we could technically do Death to the Dorgashin and one more level up. Now, I need to unlock the Goblin Village to do Lost Tribe. That would be a pretty freaking massive hotlock for this account if we could just do it. But we got a ways to go. We have to get to Goblin Village, and it's... That is, it's not that far away, but it's like probably three chunks because we can't get into the monastery. So at least three rolls away. Yeah, looking at the level up table, I think realistically the next exciting agility level is going to be 30 for the Varrock rooftop course. Here we go, attack 58. Hey, Evil Bob fishing random. I was running real late on this, man. It's driving me crazy. I think the overestimate was showing like almost three hours that I was went without a random event. 
fishing rather than magic XP. Quite good. Holy crap, yet another genie. That's not quite two back to back, but pretty close to it. I've been getting ridiculously lucky on these. Uh, I'm close to the end of the cycle, so I might save that question mark. Uh, no, I don't think I can get anywhere near. I guess it depends on how many laps I'm able to do before a Mark of Grey spawns at Draenor. I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Agility. Thank you, sir. Needing 38. You can now pickpocket from Master Farmers. All right, so that expands some of the things I have to do this cycle. Uh, done down here, though, I'm going to head out to Draenor. Okay, I'm about to pickpocket my first ever master farmer. Uh, this is gonna be pretty useless. I got some potato seeds, of course. Gonna be useless until we complete a chunk that contains a master farmer. I can also pickpocket Martin, oh, which was a medium lumberage task, right on. I think this chunk's gonna be locked out as completable for some time. Uh, the other chunk we have that has a master farmer in it is south of Arok, but that also has guards in it, so we're going to have to get to 40 thieving first, which might happen next episode. It might be the episode after that, though. We'll see. I'm going to try to do some more farming here. I'm going to plant these cabbage seeds without protecting them. I, d I have so many cabbage seeds that I don't care if I burn through some of them. I'm also going to try to plant jute seeds because I need jute fibers to protect sweet corn without a um, scarecrow, and I'm going to plant... Uh, red berry, which I think I can protect with these cabbages. All right, uh, planted my first ever red berry, first ever bush. I think I might now be able to self-sustain most farming patches. Actually, interestingly, these four jute seeds I'm about to plant, I just got from Martin. Didn't have enough for jute otherwise, so. So much for uh, only being able to pickpocket the master farmers once per cycle being a waste of time. That wasn't a waste at all. Oh my god, another genie. What is happening? Why? <laughs> I'm not going to complain, but look at this. And I had an evil Bob fishing random in the middle. This is like that last little stretch. Well, that's that's great. That one I might actually hold on to. Yeah, I'm close to the end of the chunk and I should be able to get, well, I might be able to get 356 XP next cycle, depending on how long it takes to get a Mark of Grace. This uh, needing to save a lamp until the next cycle thing is a common enough problem that I feel like I should start doing anything that requires a full inventory earlier in the cycle, like rune crafting. Because so I'm going to come out a little short on XP here, unfortunately. Well, cabbage didn't take. Oh, well. Uh, I need to pick up these cabbages anyway, so I'm going to do that, and then hopefully I'll be able to rake these patches. It does look like I'm just barely going to be able to hit 35 runecraft here. Uh, I've been talking that level up for a long time, but I don't think I'm actually going to be able to do anything with it, sadly, because I need a Chaos Talisman to do uh, what lies below. I might start the quest. I don't think I can actually... I, I should have planned ahead better because I've already killed the Outlaws for this cycle, and I can't justify killing them again. But I can at least get it started and get to the point where I have to kill them, and then I should get drops from them uh, next cycle, I think. But I have one more bit of rune crafting to do here these 27 fire runes should hit 35 yep, there's rune craft 35 will become relevant very relevant i guess we now get two fire runes from each essence that's cool too um as soon as we can get a chaos talisman i'm gonna pop up really quick and start what lies below or what lies beneath whatever it's called yeah the very first step of the quest here is i have to go kill those bandits which i've already done this cycle so i'll just put it away i wouldn't be able to do it anyway due to the lack of chaos talisman so pretty important and exciting i got another uh clean irrit leaf from sorceress's garden that's my second one ever and i need those for agility potions so i'm gonna try to continue to keep that on me for random events I guess when I say second one ever, it's my third one ever, because I turned one into a potion. I'm sitting on another one in my bank right now, trying to wait on a Jekyll random, and that's my third one, but still quite useful. All right, harvesting jute here, going to plant some barley. I'm so close to the end of the cycle, I basically just have Giant's Foundry remaining, farming 29. But I still have a handful of things that I'd like to plant, so I might just go ahead and finish up the majority of the cycle my point was going to be, uh, I might want to continue farming beyond Giant's Foundry before officially ending the cycle, but I think I'm just going to make a determination that the rules around planting one of each kind of seed in each kind of patch are per cycle. I mean, they already are, right? But the, the rule is planting, that I can harvest whenever. I can either harvest it in the same cycle or in the next cycle. It doesn't really matter. There's only really one more thing I wanted to plant in um, these two patches anyway, so. We'll just say that that rule applies to planting. 
and not also to harvesting. I don't have to like get the harvest done before the cycle's over. All right, first time harvesting a bush. Not super great. I'm gonna replace it with a cadaver bush. I just realized I have done no construction training this cycle. So I'm just gonna fill up my skull scepter and get as much of it in as I can here before we wrap stuff up. About to hit 46 construction. Parenthetical 48 with boost. Actually, the 48 boost lets me make an oak treasure chest for an extra two oak planks used per cycle, so that's quite nice. Oof, I uh, accidentally forgot to bring my staff with me, and I was like, oh shit, I'm stuck in here. I'm gonna have to wait 22 minutes, but I had enough runes to cast Lumbridge Teleport, which is a medium task, so, you know, that's done now. Um, also, I brought oak logs instead of planks. I'm just fucking up all over the place today. Built a treasure chest, so this room is... Approaching being done, which is very nice. All right, this is uh, pretty good in terms of construction XP, 7,322. Should be able to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,000 every cycle going forward. Uh, time to head to Giant's Foundry and uh, wrap this up. Okay, so we're here at Giant's Foundry. Let me grab this pile of buckets to officially complete my last task. I was getting really nervous that my method of just combining all my bars together was in fact a mistake and that you get something greater than the sum of its parts if you uh, use better alloys. Uh, when I originally set forth to do this strategy, there wasn't a lot of information on specifically how Giant's Foundry works. Now there is. And so I was able to go on the RuneScape Wiki Discord and uh, appeal for some help on that. I doubt the person who helped me on the Discord is ever going to watch this series, but Torin, if you're watching, thank you very much for all of your assistance. We did the calculations, and here's how it breaks down. If I have a finite amount of resources, which a lot of people kept coming in saying, why do you care? Just just mine more of the good stuff. I'm like, I, I know, I promise my resources are finite. If I have a finite amount of resources, then the most efficient thing I can use my coal on is a 14 mithril, 14 steel alloy every time. So basically never use adamant, never use rune. Quality per bar, it's better to stick with only mithril and steel. Um, if coal becomes not a problem in the future, if I get a, a shitload of coal from some source, maybe that changes a little bit. But for now, I need to make 14 mithril and then 14 steel forever. Um, I did learn that if you make a three bar alloy, the highest quality or the, the, the lowest amount of material you put in there just basically gets ignored. It just counts as a dummy slot to get you up to 28 bars. So unfortunately, the fact that I've been using mithril and steel for that means that I've been missing out on a lot of extra quality from not saving up to make the better alloys. But I guess I can argue that at least I got higher level sooner. I got mold sooner or something. I don't know. It was probably a, a flat mistake and I probably missed out on a lot of smithing XP and money because of it. Um, but the gist of it is I need to wait and save bars until I have 1414 mithril silver. In the meantime, all I can do is bronze and iron, and I need to calculate what the proportion I have, the ratio of bronze to iron I have, and then do my best to make bars in that proportion until I run out. So I think the amount of XP I'm going to get per cycle from Giant's Foundry is going to go down a bit until I start actually having enough to make a mithril steel sword which right now I think is only going to happen once every other cycle or so. Uh, so in any case, I'm not doing anything with Mithril or Steel this time. I'm probably only going to be able to make uh, a few really low XP swords, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to start working on the math right now. Amusingly, I actually have uh, 48 of each kind of bar. Okay, so I can safely make um, three. Although I think 1414 is actually bad for Bronze Iron. Let me double check the, the table here. Yeah, optimally I do 21.9 for as long as I can get away with it. So I can do 21.9 on two swords, but I'd only end up making two swords. I can go up to 23.5, which isn't great. I guess if we do 14.14, 14, it's not actually, it's like a loss of one quality. And uh, I do get significantly fewer iron bars than I get bronze bars right now just from bronze drops. So I, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do 14.14. 14. All right, I'm not reporting on individual swords anymore, but we did just get 5,000 XP, 10,000 coins, level 60 smithing. Can now make myth battle axes and dragon square shields. Um, I can also buy another mold, which I will wait to buy until I get a commission that benefits from it. I'm gonna get it right now, I got a really bad commission. Okay, yeah, that actually, that works out pretty well. Okay, all done. 
uh, we are level 60 smithing now, which is really cool. I have end of chunk stuff to go through here. So let's let's take a look. All right, just gonna start scrolling with some commentary. Uh, we are gonna be able to harpoon fish and lobster pot fish to our heart's content in South Unka ruins starting next cycle. So that's quite exciting. Skipped planting a flower. I'm just gonna leave the marigold in there. It's such a, it's a homeopathic amount of XP and it's easier to just be certain that the low level allotments that I plant are going to, to work. Uh, skipping Shantae Pass, I don't really care about any of these creatures. I'm using this boundary icon to mean that this includes a count of enemies that are outside of, that don't actually spawn in that chunk. First cycle skipping Spria, three to go before we can use her as a Slayer Master. This is our last cycle with the shooting star. Um, we finally made up for going there too early. I can start tapping out the shrimp and herring spots and also start tapping out the shooting star again, which is gonna be great for video editing. I've got something to do. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that requirement. What lies below we've started, but I need a chaos talisman. Hello, that's why I was standing where I was standing. Too bad it wasn't Jekyll, but I'll take that as a random event. I think that's everybody. All right, uh, let's look at loot, slow scroll. I think I'm actually finally had a cycle this time where I didn't overdo something. There is one extra highwayman kill in here. This is a highwayman that wanders in out of the Falador farm chunk. It's like the chunk to the west of Falador farm. I didn't realize that it was a separate one until it didn't drop a black cape, but I'm not going to count that as a mistake. I'll just add it as a, a boundary trunk kill. Um, when you were looking at pickpocket counts, remember that this is a combination of the farmers that I'm only allowed to pickpocket once and the farmers that I can pickpocket 28 times. Um, so I do have that in my tracker spreadsheet. I'm sure I'll show it off again in the future. It's a skilling targets list that lets me estimate how many total of a thing um, I can do in a cycle. But this is correct according to that. 198 total pickpockets equals seven of them 28 times plus the remaining two once, I think. Anyway, I'll show it off later. Really nice Briar fight to kill here, and a really nice set of Spoils of War. Two big upgrades this cycle. I'm very excited about both of those. And remember, Hobgoblins was the Slayer task. Uh, we're allowed to do one Slayer task from Vanaka and effectively ignore exhaustion rules until the task is done. Okay, I can put this away now. I'm saving this lamp because we are close to an agility level up. Let me go ahead and talk you through XP gains here pause the live split timer. It is almost exactly 25 hours if I had paused it right when I started talking there. Uh, so better than last cycle, probably because of the reduced amount of Slayer, but we've still broken the 24 hour mark. It now takes me more than 24 hours to do a cycle. I am still doing them in a week, but I'm having to like run myself ragged to do it. I should probably just accept that I'm gonna not, I'm gonna miss the week marker from now on. Uh, but you, these XP gains on the right are correct. Um, I did not experience a crash or anything, so this is exactly how much I earned, about 247k this time. Uh, in terms of upcoming exciting levels, I'm going to stay on attack for a while. Uh, at least until 62, I might take it even to 65, just to get as much accuracy as possible before we switch to defense. Um, I might be able to sit down and try to go hard on fletching. It's not a huge priority at the moment. The big one for thieving is 40 thieving. 
We have officially switched to this new rule set for thieving. And just in case you were worried that that might be broken, this is not a lot of XP. <laughs> this is 5,575 thieving XP over 25 hours of play. Yeah. 223 XP per hour. That's 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 more like it. It's still, it, it is now gone from this is never gonna happen to at least now we might reasonably be able to do the quest cape with thieving. So I think that was a, a good change. My only regret is that I didn't think of it at the beginning of the playthrough. Um, mining, 55 mining is the objective, and it's more likely starting next cycle now that we can start doing shooting stars again. 35 Slayer may be possible, depending on what Vinaka task we get next cycle. Remember, we can still be blocked by Vinaka. If Vinaka gives us a task that we literally can't do that's not an active chunk, we're just locked out of Slayer until we get another one. So um, the change I made about Slayer tasks and the bell ringing and all of that doesn't necessarily save us. We could still get pretty screwed there. Agility, uh, I've got 356 to go until 23. So I'm gonna try really hard to next cycle immediately go and do pray for the Mark of Grace to spawn late. We'll also do the Alkarid course and the monkey bars. Should get us to 23, I should be able to pop this. Uh, 24 is a good agility level because that gets us more run energy restore. And I don't think we're gonna care about agility levels until 27 after that, because then we can boost to do the uh, Verak course. But I'm going to have to get, I, I haven't seen Dr. Jekyll in a while. The last time I saw him, um, I didn't have the herb on me. So we really got to get one of those. I hope, hopefully we'll get one before hitting 27. 35 Runecraft was an exciting level, but we needed Chaos Talisman, and I don't currently have any way to get one, as far as I know. Uh, supplies used? Brought it down quite a bit. Not too bad on the whole, though. I already showed you the random event list here, from this cycle anyway. I was forgetting something. Total time played, 17 days, 12 hours. That number is climbing, climbing, climbing. Uh, bank, new stuff. 10 desert goat horns, 3 raw tuna, 8 oak roots, 5 iron javelins. I'll go ahead and clear the mossy key. Rune plate legs and rune square shield, which I'm going to very happily move into my gear tab here. Uh, I did catch a raw cave eel when I was fishing earlier. Cadaver berry seed. Um, I keep accidentally bringing my farming equipment away from the tool leprechaun because I'm a dummy. And then this is a quest item for um, what lies below. So let me clean this up and we'll do a scroll. All right, here's the slow scroll of the bank totals and we'll look at a comparison here in a second. Really excited. Whenever we get to herb lore, it's gonna be breakpoint cosmic. I'm living for that moment, even though it's gonna be like a thousand hours from now. Uh, compare bank saves. Let's do chunk 36 to 38. Remember we had, this is chunk 38 rather than 37 because we technically rolled the Tempora spirit boat and then couldn't do anything with it. That was 37. Here's the change in runes. Even after using nine law runes, I'm still up by seven. So I think we are pretty stable on law runes. I wouldn't say I feel stable enough to start saying that we can make these other chunks rollable. Falador, for example, or Camelot. I think I would want to have more than 100 law runes in the bank just to pick an arbitrary number um, and also still be seeing a, a net gain in law runes every cycle. And then we might consider making teleports um, a rollable chunk. I just, as I've stated before, I want to make sure that we have a consistent way to get to and from that chunk every cycle going forward. Um... Everything else in here is pretty kosher, I think. Okay. I think that's everything there is to summarize. So it's time to roll a new chunk. Let me pull up the chunk picker. Alrighty, we're here in the chunk picker. Let's first talk about things that uh, are different. The monastery over here we rolled, but then had to unroll. You can see it here in the chunk roll history. So there's evidence with that one, as well as the, uh, where was it? Port Serum. We rolled it, didn't realize we could only get to like way less than 1% of the chunk and then had to, to undo things and rewind stuff. So I've made this unrollable for now. We're not gonna be able to roll it until we have either this one 21 or this uh, wilderness chunk to the north, else we can't get to anything there. Um, this is kind of a bummer. I would have rather had this chunk. Um, as far as new chunks to roll, 
This is pretty much the only one, and if we roll it, we re-roll because there's there's nothing here on the west side of Menaphos. So if that happens, no big deal. This is a crown chunk. I think I've talked about that before. I would love to get Temporos. I would love to get Port Serum. Um, I would be great with Paterdomus. I would be very happy, very, very happy with the Edgeville Ditch up here so we can finally uh, start doing the RuneCraft minigame. Thalador would be great since we can just barely sneak in there, and there's a ton of content via the Dwarven Mine and the Motherload Mine. Um, and I would also be fine with the Thalador South Wall. Uh, some good stuff over here, and it gets us closer to things that I'm very interested in. Air Altar is one of them. Let's not uh, dork around, though. If you want to hear all my comments on all of these things, go watch earlier videos. I guess I should say what my thoughts are over here on Catherby. Why do I... Wait a minute. I fixed that. I, th I think I was just confused. Maybe I was checking out the Dwarven Mine connections or something. Anyway, I, I can't get to uh, Catherby. Places that are distant, I can get to. I can get to Castle Wars via the Grand Exchange. Um, I can get to this boat. I don't think there's anywhere else that I can go that's super distant. I, I could go here because of the Waka Canoe, but I don't have any way to get back um, because the, the lever would take me to Arduin right now, and I can't do the diary to get elsewhere. Oh, I guess the Bedabin camp, I would really love. I, I miss Poldum Niche. This place would be great, uh, if only because I would finally have access to a POH portal, which means that I could do all kinds of stuff, like I could start training prayer much more easily. I could train construction with some of the weirder items like limestone bricks and soft clay that I'm currently not using because they're not law rune efficient. Okay, for real this time, let's uh, let's pick the chunk and see what we get. Big money. Okay, that's uh, Isle of Souls. I had that as a thumbs down. Don't remember why. There's two birds. Six crimson swifts that I don't think I can catch right away. 104 trees, oof. Uh, it must be the Crimson Swifts. Um, what level do I need for those? It's level one, but I need a bird snare, and I don't think I can get a bird snare at all, right? There's one that spawns in the Isle of Souls dungeon, which is on the other side of the Isle of Souls. There's one in the Land's End, which I'm nowhere near, and there's one in Narda and Yanil. Yeah, so I can't... This isn't a meaningfully new chunk, but it's also not re-rollable because it did have some new entity in it. I just can't interact with that entity yet. So this is kind of a sucky roll. I'm, I'm a little bummed about this. Uh, next cycle is just going to be chopping a bunch of trees. But I guess it does have the effect of getting us closer. Um, I think this is just going to be a re-roll here on the west. Yeah, it just has trees in it. Um, it's going to get us closer up to here. This crumbling tower chunk is a long ways away, but if we can get it, it's a pretty big deal because there is a pestle and mortar there, and I need one really bad, and also a, a bird spare. So it, it, it could happen. Oh, and a box trap. Yeah, so th this sucks, but hey, we're getting the sucky ones out of the way. Um, I guess that's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next episode. Bye, everybody.